morning. I know it'll be oh, great. It'll be great. On. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jeff Smith, and I'm a picky eater. If we were meeting for the first time about 15 years ago, uh, that's how I would have introduced myself to you. Because boy, was I a picky eater. Back when I was yeah, about high school age, kind of 15, 16, there was a short list of things that I deemed acceptable to eat. I was very picky. And in fact, I was so picky that I wouldn't even try most foods. If something looked a little funny or had a weird smell to it, I would just be like, no thanks, not going to try it. It was kind of weird, though, because then I started to think, like, why, if all these foods are so gross, why do so many people eat them? What is wrong with them? But then I started to think, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's me. Maybe I should try some of these foods that I have turned my nose up at, just see what they're like. You know what, what's the worst thing that could happen? So... I started to try more things, but, but it was not like, I wasn't that excited about it. I, I put something new on my fork, my hand would be trembling. I would be trying to gather the courage. My face would be all wrinkled up, you know. And I'd, I'd be saying to myself inside, just try it. And I would try it, and sometimes I liked it. A lot of times I still didn't like it, but at least I tried it. And the thing is too, I kept trying things. There were two things in particular that I remember. There were two foods that I remember that the first time I tried them, they were not for me. Those were olives and tomatoes. Pretty normal foods, right? They were not my thing, olives and tomatoes. And so, but you know, I, I kind of heard, you know, oh, as you get older, you know, your taste buds change and they evolve and maybe I should try these things. There's an acquired taste for them. And so every year I would try them again. It's, it's olive day, I'm gonna try it. No, still not, still not for me. Tomato day, uh, kind of weird. But over the years I, I kept trying them and now today I love them both. I love olives. Such a good snack, and I cannot have a sandwich or a burger without a tomato. Can't do it. I love them so much. It's all because I just tried it. I want you to think about a time where you tried something new. It doesn't have to just be food, although I do love talking about food. Think about a time when you tried something new, whether it's food, whether it's a new activity, a new group, something new. How did you feel? Maybe a little nervous? Anybody out there felt nervous? That's pretty normal. Did you feel a sense of dread? Oh, I don't want to do this. Don't make me. Maybe you felt excited. You know, you kind of put a positive spin. I'm going to be excited about this. This might be a good thing. Some felt maybe a little apprehensive. Take a step back. I don't know about this. Maybe you've even felt intrigued a little bit. I know some people who have tried this. They like it. This might be good for me. Hmm. This year at St. Paul, I'm asking you to just try it. Just try it. What in the world am I talking about? You're like, I'm not going to commit to trying something without knowing what you're saying. Well, this year, we're, we're going to be doing some new and exciting things and there are many new ways to connect to God and other people around the study of his word. And I'm asking you to just try it. Just try it. Many of you are probably already in this habit. You read the Bible regularly, you're in some type of a Bible study group, you do something to stay connected to God and to his word and that's wonderful. Now, even if that's you, you are not dismissed to leave yet. I'm going to ask you that you remain here with us because maybe there's something new that God is setting before you to just try this year. Maybe there's a new group of people that, you, that he wants you to connect to. There, there's a further way to connect to his word and grow in your faith. So keep open to the possibility that there's something new for you to try to expand your horizons and to grow as a disciple of Jesus. 
But for many of us, I don't think that we do have a regular habit of being in God's word, whether by ourselves or with other people. Many of us have probably tried it before. We've tried to read the Bible. It's been confusing. It's been hard to understand. And so we gave up. Many of us maybe have tried, but just the the busyness of life got in the way, and we just weren't able to keep a routine, and so we gave up. And I understand when something is difficult, when there's resistance, it is easy to, to just stop doing it. It's hard to try something new. It's hard to make a change in your life. But there are also probably many of us who were like me when I was a picky eater, where we just haven't even tried it. You know, we hear about how, oh, it's good to read the Bible and be in a Bible study and be in a group of people that, that reads the Bible, and, but we just haven't done it because maybe, maybe, I mean, there's a lot of reasons, maybe. Maybe one is that I just don't like to read. That's, I would rather do anything than read something. Please don't make me. Or maybe you just think, you know what, I would maybe do it for three days in a row and then I would just quit and, you know, it's better just to not even start than to fail at it. There's, we could come up, I am confident in this, if we, if we started brainstorming reasons not to try something new, we would come up with dozens of them, hundreds even today. There's always a reason not to try something new. But I'm gonna tell you to just try it anyway. Just try something new anyway. When I'm asking you to do this right now, I am not asking you to do it for me. This is very important. I am not asking you to, to do this for me. Now, I, I care if you do it. I care if you get connected to God and, and to other people around his word. I pray that you do. But this is not something that you're doing as a personal favor to me or your other pastors or to your church. This is something that you are doing for yourself. It is gonna benefit you. It is gonna benefit your family. It is gonna benefit your relationships. It is gonna benefit you and help you grow as a disciple of Jesus. It is gonna grow you in your faith and prepare you to live all parts of your life following your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now as we experience God's story together this year, it is going to do some things. It is going to change us. It is going to impact your lives. It's going to have an effect on you um, in some ways that you don't even know yet. And I'm excited to see what it's going to do. So here's a couple of things that you can expect, a couple of, of benefits that God has in store for you as we together experience his story this year. Number one, it's going to be fun and exciting. You're thinking, yeah, right. You're thinking, Pastor, I have tried to read the Bible before. Maybe, you know, have you ever started just from the beginning, Genesis 1, and then just gone in order? You're thinking, Pastor, I've done that. Just a few pages in, boom, there's a genealogy. Family tree, so and so begat so and so, and you're even and you're saying so and so because you can't pronounce the names. It's impossible. You get through those, you think you're in the clear. Boom! God's given Moses all these laws and all these instructions of how to build the tabernacle. And you're thinking, okay, fine. Oh, good, the instructions are over. Now, oh, then they repeat the whole thing as they're building it. Oh, I thought we were okay. Okay, you get through that, then. You're confronted by the nitty gritty details of how to slaughter animals and which parts go up on the altar and get burned and which parts get burned outside the camp. And then you've already, you've given up. This is not fun and exciting. Well, let me tell you, there is much, much, much more in the Bible than those things. And there, there's value in those things too, but there is much more that actually is fun and exciting to read. There are dramatic exciting stories that, that would give an action movie a run for its money. Tales of God stepping in to rescue his people from some terrible incident, some terrible danger, and God dramatically swoops in and saves them, and you're just left there in awe. Wow, God has done this for his people. Look what God does for his people throughout history. It's amazing. 
There's also some weird, wild, and wacky stuff in the Bible, too. Anyone, a book of Judges, anyone? Have you read that before? You, as you read through the Bible, you will, you will constantly be saying, this is in the Bible? I did not know that. And it's fun and exciting. There is underrated humor in the Bible. Underrated humor. There is love and heartbreak and tragedy, edge of your seat thrills, and above all, it is God's story. It is God's story, and it is your story, too, because Jesus died for you, Jesus rose again, and because you believe in Jesus, you are part of this whole family of faith. And so as you're reading about Abraham in the Old Testament, you're like, yeah, that's my great-granddaddy Abraham. This is my family. You're reading your story, too, as you fit in. You see where you fit in to God's story. And it's amazing. It's fun and exciting. So, be open-minded and be ready to be pleasantly surprised by what the Bible has in store for you. Another thing it's going to do is it's going to teach and shape me. When we talk about the Bible, it's a book. It is the textbook of the Holy Spirit. It's also the tool of the Holy Spirit. The textbook and the tool. The Holy Spirit opens it up and he, and he teaches you what you need to know. It teaches you, you learn more about who God is, what he's like, how he feels about you. You learn to trust more deeply in Jesus as your Savior. The Spirit teaches you as you go through life. He also, every time you encounter God's Word, whether it's here at church, whether you're reading it at home, whether you're in a group, whether you're like me and you listen to it in your earbuds uh, while you're doing chores around the house, whenever you encounter God's Word, the Holy Spirit is using this as a tool to, to shape you, to grow you in your faith, to strengthen you for service to one another, for greater love, for greater faith, for greater discipleship as you follow Jesus in this world. The Spirit helps you to internalize God's word and then to put it into practice, to do what Jesus says. Speaking of which, the Bible also is going to apply to my entire life. Many of us, we, we already know that it applies to our eternal life, right? Right? really focused in on that, but the Bible also speaks to our day-to-day -day life. It is relevant to our life right now in today's world. We may be skeptical. We may think, you know, how can it be? It's so old. But God's word is timeless. His truth does not have an expiration date. It's not like we hit the year 2000 and God's like, yeah, I can just throw that out now. It doesn't, doesn't apply to anything anymore. No, it is still relevant. In fact, you will, be, you will be astounded by how many times you are reading through the Bible and you will think, I cannot believe that this was written thousands of years ago. It seems like this was written this year. This is speaking so specifically to what I'm going through right now. It's going to apply to your entire life. It's going to prepare you to go out into all of your roles, all of your relationship in life, and to follow Jesus. One more thing it's going to do. It's going to help me connect with other followers of Jesus. And this is, this is so key. It's a great thing to read the Bible on your own. I encourage you to do so. But there is no substitute to getting with a group of people and reading it together. It's so crucial to get with a group of like-minded people, people who are trying to follow Jesus just like you out there at work, at school, in all of your other roles in your neighborhood. It's a crazy world, and we're all trying to follow Jesus. And so when we come together, and we get the Bible open, and we struggle with it, and we wrestle with what it says, and we try to interpret it together, and the Holy Spirit is there, and he is teaching us, he is giving us wisdom, and we are sharing with one another, hey, let me tell you what, what I've learned from God's word. Let me tell you what, what God's been saying to me as I've been reading through this. Let me share this experience that I've had, and, and, you, and you just get closer with one another. It binds you closer together, and you encourage each other, and then you go out, strengthened to follow Jesus, then you come back, and then you talk about how it's been going. And it's a wonderful thing. The Bible, the word of God is going to do all these things for you. It's going to have all these benefits for you, and I am asking you to just try it. Just try it. What can I try, you're asking? What specifically do you have to offer here? How can I connect more with God and with other people? Well, I want you to get your bulletin out, 
and you're gonna see there's a whole bunch of inserts today. I want you to pull out the one that looks like this from your bullet. It's colorful on one side. It's got another side too, which we'll talk about in a minute. It says Christian Education Opportunities Fall 2018 in the upper right hand corner. This one. Does everyone have it? I've got all day. I've got nothing, I've got nowhere else to be. I'm gonna wait till everybody's got okay. Now one. One option that we have to just try this year is to attend a Sunday morning Bible study. And actually, these are not just all on Sunday morning. There are some throughout the week as well. But I want you to look at this, look at these options here. We've got stuff for kids. Our children's ministry meets here on Sunday mornings. We've got our youth ministry for middle schoolers and high schoolers meets here on Sunday mornings too. We've got adult classes taking place at the same time. There's a list right here. If you're looking for a, a study that goes through a book of the Bible, we've got those. If you're looking for more of a topical one, we've got that. If you're looking for one just for parents, we can hook you up with that. If you're one, one just for women or just for men, we've got those too. I want you to look through, figure out which study you're just gonna try. At the bottom of the page, there's a dotted line. That's for tearing. I want you to write down which study you're just gonna try, put your name and a way to contact you. I want you to tear it off and put it um, at the end of the sermon. The ushers are going to come back with the offering plates. You're going to put these slips of paper in there. It's going to be a way for us to commit to just trying something. So you can go ahead. I know you can multitask. You can fill this out right now. You can, you can even tear it right now. I don't care. I can, I can endure the tearing noise in the background. All right, so get to work on that. Attend a Sunday morning Bible study is one option. A second one is join a connection group. On the other side, we have information about our Connected in Christ small group ministry that is gonna be launching here at St. Paul this fall. It's coming soon. It has not started yet, but it is coming soon. This, other than coming together for worship, like we're doing right now, this is going to be the heart and soul of how we connect with God and with each other here at St. Paul. These groups, we're calling them connection groups. These are going to be groups where you gather together with each other. You're going to read the Bible. You're going to pray for each other. You're going to just hang out and get to know each other. Yes, there's going to be food also. You're going to eat together. That usually helps the conversation, I think. You're going to start to care for one another. You're going to start to know each other on a deeper level. These are going to be your people. You know, this is a big church, right? It's a big congregation. This is going to be your small, little congregation in the midst of the big congregation. This is going to be the place where you're going to connect. It's easy to get lost in a big church, right? These groups are going to connect you in. They're going to plug you in. They're going to give you people to just do life with. So I, I ask you to keep your eyes and ears open for more information, but think about just trying to join a connection group this year here at St. Paul. One last way to connect, to just try, is follow a Bible reading plan. And um, I'm going to, because I'm a millennial, I'm going to recommend two apps, and they are both free. One is the Read Scripture app. This is the official Bible reading app of the Smith household that Melissa and I both use. It is awesome. You read about, it takes about 10 or 15 minutes a day, you read a few chapters of the Bible. And the wonderful thing is that they have videos. So before you're reading some confusing chapter in the Old Testament, here's a video explaining what you're about to read. And, it, and they're awesome, they're very visual, and, they're, and they're, they just explain things in simple, concise terms. So the Read Scripture app. Another one is the YouVersion Bible app. A lot of you probably already have this on your phone or your tablet. Uh, if you search for Bible, it's the first one that comes up. But this one is really great because it has like every version of the Bible, and it has all these custom Bible reading plans. If you say, I want to read the Bible in a year, I want to read it in five years, I want to read it, you know, um, five times a week, you can, you can do all this stuff, and it kind of fits your needs. So I recommend both of these, and I also recommend that you buddy up with someone. So you say, I'm going to start doing this, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invite a couple friends to do it with me. Kind of helps with accountability. You're going to read it, you know, read it for a week, then like, hey, let's go out for coffee, let's talk about what we've read. Let's hold each other accountable and let's connect with God and with each other through reading God's word. So I'm going to ask you to just try. Just try it. 
for 30 days, let's say. Try for 30 days. That's not, that's not a huge burden, right? Decide what you're going to do and just put yourself out there and try it and see how God changes your life. You can say to God, God, I dare you to change my life through your word. I'm starting something new. I'm just trying something. God, give me an open mind. Give me an open heart to receive what you're going to show me in your word. Help me to connect more with you and with other people. Send your Holy Spirit to grow me in my faith, to help me on my journey of following you in this world and see what he does. Just try it and see how God changes your life. Let's do this, St. Paul. Let's try it together. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God that passes all of our human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Our usher is going to come forward now. I did not forget. I have not heard very much tearing. Our usher is going to come forward and, and gather up these little strips of paper, so please give those uh, to them, and we're going to have some nice music as well. Mm -hmm.